Well, what Hope House um, does, one of the things that we do, um, uh, we provide biblical counseling, um, we provide birth certificates, we provide what we call a psychosocial um, to every resident, whether they're male or female that comes in. And what that psychosocial does, it, um, it deals with um, past history. Um, I believe this, that um, when people come in saying they're homeless, that homeless is not the problem, it is a product of the problem. So the psychosocial gets to the root of the problem. And so that's one of the tools that we use. After the psychosocial is done, we then develop what we call a case plan um, to be able to meet that individual resident needs. Um, we have um, different facilitators that come in to help us with that case plan. Um, we may have a resident that in the psychosocial, it may be uh, deemed that they need anger management. We have anger management classes, we have low self-esteem, we have parenting classes, we have health classes, we have home economic. And so the list goes on and on to be able to uh, help that individual so they become whole. I say six months down the road, you see that same individual get their GED, you see that same individual get a job, you see that same individual that no longer on crack or uh, on hair on, you know, you said, wow, you can see now the greatness. So uh, what I see is, is, is just greatness uh, in the future uh, for not only for, 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 for Hope House, but for a Center for Women and Children. And you see a mom that may have four or five kids that now says, wow, I know how to parent now. You know, so um, I just see, just see success. I was brought up here by a friend that wanted to see me get myself together. And I thank God for that friend. And, uh, <clears throat> and you know, it's just been wonderful for me here. Uh, the Hope House has really, really changed my life around. Um, I'm an addict. Uh, like I said, thank God for this place. I am a recovery. I never um, had a lot of months in being sober. This is the first time in years that I can remember that uh, I can wake up with money in my pocket or I can wake up without smoking a cigarette or um, just wake up and, and take a urine test and know that I'm clean. It feels wonderful to me. Pastor Foster is a wonderful, wonderful man. He, um, he's been there for me. Um, like he would do anybody, you know. He never turned his back on me. You know, he seen something in me that I didn't see myself. So between him and God using him to give me the word for me to be stronger inside, it, it works. I would say um, one of the biggest challenges that we all face is fear. Don't allow fear to stop you from walking in greatness. And sometimes the fear of the unknown. Hey, I'm not going to go here because people might say this or say that. I always say, don't allow fear to paralyze you. You know, just you know, step across it and say, listen, I've got an issue. And I've always said, don't let people judge you. You know, take that next step and say, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to make the call. I'm the community relations director. So I, uh, among other things, I, I do the marketing, communications, um, got the website up and going, all the publications, that kind of thing. And then uh, the other side of my job is is finding money, right? So the, the fundraising end of things, the development, and, and uh, helping so that we can keep doing what we're doing here. We, we need money to, to be able to do that. And I love it here. Uh, I just um, knew it was just going to be a perfect place because I was so excited and thrilled at the idea of being in ministry. So I never thought that would be possible. So I was very excited uh, when they gave me a call and asked me to interview. Um, so I feel very privileged to be here working in ministry. Um, I came in here, when I came in, I was battling real hard with my addiction. Didn't really know where to go with it, had been fighting for a while. And it took me bottoming out and losing everything to realize that I needed more help than what I was currently getting. So I went to my caseworker from Children's Services and I begged her to get me into a program and she brought me here. It really has. Honestly, I really feel like this place saved my life because the path I was on 
I mean, it wasn't leading anywhere. The things that I've accomplished in the last almost four months, it's things that I never thought were going to get accomplished. I mean, I, I thought it was going to take forever. And I've already got my housing because they helped me push it through. You know, like I said, I'm almost done with my programming. I'll be graduating in February and, you know, working on going back to work and everything. So, and hopefully here in, you know, the near future, I'll be able to have my babies back with me in my housing. Um, one in four people in the greater Cincinnati area lives in poverty. And one in three children in Middletown lives in poverty. So uh, that's what causes a lot of people to end up in a situation where they, they may be homeless. And then when they come here, one of our priorities is to um, feed them nutritiously and to um, teach the moms, for example, how to prepare food uh, that's nutritious for themselves and for their children. I went through nutrition and I went through um, life skills, the life skills, they helped me with my resume and I look forward to going to school as soon as I moved to my house, which they helped me get my housing. I have an apartment now. I've been homeless for two years and I finally got a place. We were living in the back of the truck and I wasn't homeless until I came here. I'm very much looking forward to having my own bed, sleeping with my children, and then having their own rooms. It's exciting. I'm pulling myself together. I'm stronger now than I've been here. Yeah. Very, a lot more stronger than I was before I got here. Yes, thanks to the Hope House. If I didn't have them, I would, don't know where I would be. I don't know where I would be. The most critical need we have is for funding. Uh, it's, it's as simple as that. In this anemic economy, donations are down. 70%, uh, uh, nearly 70% of our funding comes from individuals like you. And we need uh, funding to be able to continue our programming, to continue helping women and children and men who really are living on life's margins. These are people that, that want to get better and they want to go on and, and get their GED and uh, find a decent job and find permanent housing. But uh, for us to be able to continue that the programming, we really need your help and we really need help with funding. So uh, if it's just $5, if it's $50 and you want to be a continuing donor, um, any, any little bit helps, $50 a month, um, whatever, whatever it might be. So simply go to our website, missionhope.org, and click on the Donate Now button. And thank you. God bless you. We ask that you be with us in spirit throughout the day. We ask that you forgive us for our sins and give us strength in our journey. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. your eyes.